Uh, Infinity, what is this? EX35. And does anyone recognize this uh, color of wheel? Yep. And all the, the sparkly stuff. You know, like those sparkly vampires. So, metal on metal contact with the brake pads. Just gonna get uh, pads and rotors back here. And it'll be on its way. So here's the damage, just as I suspected, obviously, super easy stuff. Here we have an 03 Trailblazer, came in on the hook last night, a uh, customer says, can't get it out of park. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure the brake switch is okay, push the brake pedal on, let go of the brake pedal and off you know the brakes or the brake pedal feels like crap it feels like it goes pretty far down to the ground but that's not the issue so there's nothing wrong with the brake switch um this thing will not move so the next thing i'm gonna do is just go underneath the car And there goes your problem right there. And I almost ran myself over. Like an idiot, I forgot to pull the emergency brake. So I go underneath the car and I move the shift lever on the transmission. And obviously I moved it so it goes into reverse. So at this point the car starts rolling on me so I have to quickly slide out from underneath the car. And luckily the car stopped because it hit the the, the tire hit the curb right there but there's a car right behind us and it's like a foot away so thank god the steering wheel was turned because that front wheel hit the curb and prevented it from uh, rolling back even more that was definitely a scary experience so yep that was so stupid on my part okay so uh i got the truck moving uh what i did is i made sure to pull the mercy brake but I really don't know if that emergency brake even works and I didn't want to trust it, you know, put myself in any more danger. So what I did is I went ahead and grabbed some wheel chocks, put the wheel chocks on, and then I also turned the steering wheel towards the curb. In case it started uh, rolling forward, the wheel would hit the curb and hopefully stop the car and, you know, <laughs> stop me from getting crushed. But uh, yeah, it worked out. Uh, that was super sketchy, super stupid on my part and, you know, Ah, just it's too early for this you know until I wasn't thinking right but yep I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pull it into the garage and uh, fix this part it looks like I found why the brake pedals going all the way to the ground so one thing after another now of course hindsight is 2020. I think what I should have done in that situation was turn the vehicle off, connect the shift linkage, throw a zip tie around it to hold it temporarily, then get in the car, start it, and I could drive it into the garage and start working on it. I just <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my mind around like what the hell was I thinking when I did that. But yeah, that's what I should have done. All right, so I finally got the shift linkage fixed on this trailblazer. And it only took going to AutoZone like three times. So as you can see, it's connected. And the part that ended up working was uh, this uh, Dorman part. You know, once in a while, Dorman comes to the rescue. So you want to make sure you get this uh, 140. The 140 55 because the first time I went they gave me a different number and it did not fit so it's gonna be a two-pack and the one that's uh, transparent is the one that's gonna fit it was that a uh, broken brake line on the trailblazer so as you can see 
what happened there. I ended up putting in a much larger section than I wanted to, but I found more rot in the line. So, anyways, that's why I put my connection using a union fitting. And then it ends all the way over here, going into this three-way connector right there. So, a little bit more work than I wanted to do, but it turned out fine. I just gotta bleed the brakes. I'm in this Hyundai Elantra, the one with the broken CV shaft. We have not received a new part yet, but it was here for another issue. Uh, as you know, it's getting cold outside, and at best, we would get warm air out of the vents. First thing I wanted to attack was the thermostat, simply because the customer tried to do it himself, and I know his quality of work. So that's the first place I was going. Uh, and sure enough, I was right. They brought me a new thermostat, but I was able to put that one back in a box because the one that's in there is already a new thermostat. What's going on here is he left the old gasket material in place and tried to put the new gasket over it. So obviously it was leaking. Took care of that, and right now, as you can see, I'm going through the bleeding process, trying to get all the air out the system. But, uh, yep, it's blowing nice and hot now. No issues, so it was a pretty simple fix here. All right, so I got like this little uh, Black Friday sale at Advanced Auto Parts. Just some uh, gear wrench, reversible wrenches. As you can see, they got the toggle switch right here. Now I do have some gear wrenches already, but I have this kind that both ends are box ends. And uh, you know, in order to go forward or reverse, you just have to flip the, the wrench around. The problem with that is uh, like say if you're removing a tensioner and the fastener is coming out and it hits the frame rail and you already have obviously your ratchet on there, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place at that point. Kind of just screwed yourself. So I'm really conscious when I'm removing fasteners like that. Once I get near the end where I, I will no longer be able to get this one out, I got to switch over to a regular wrench. So with these, it, it'll really help me. I don't have to be uh, as careful, you know, if I hit that rail I could just reverse the fastener and that's it so these are normally about 65 I got them for like 30 so not bad okay, so here we have an Acura I think it's a 2.2 CL 2.2 CL I don't know because the tag has been ripped off the back anyway it belongs to a customer of mine the one that has that Volvo which I'm sure you guys are familiar with the one he's been jumping through hoops with lately so he decided to get rid of the Volvo and he bought this Acura off of Craigslist, which honestly I think it was a step in the right direction. So uh, I'm really happy he got rid of that turd. But uh, it's here for a wobble, and of course I told him any used car you buy is gonna come with its own problem. So expect to do maintenance on it, of course. But anyways, he says there's a, a wobble at like 60 miles per hour. So I just checked it over, and looks like it has one bad outer tie rod. So I'm going to go ahead and get that changed and just look over the car in general, look over some maintenance items. But yeah, it was definitely a step in the right direction, uh, getting rid of that Volvo. Alright, so we stopped at AutoZone and got the new outer tie rod. So, What are you, just uh, record, recording? That yeah, I'm recording for Instagram. You, uh, edit on your... uh, these short videos, I really don't edit them. They just go on Instagram and then I put them on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got the new uh, outer tie rod, car's all fixed, no more wobble. So it was a super easy job today. And that's it for this one, at least for now. Yeah, that's why it came off. Yeah, okay, so uh, the customer was only, there's a Honda Accord. Customer is only getting the fan speeds uh, three and four. And um, yeah, this thing is uh, pretty crusty. The connector on it, I mean, I had to pry it off. So, look at all that corrosion inside of there. So, we're gonna go ahead and change it out with a new one, and the fan speed should be working. Okay, so, we're working on that same accord. Another issue the customer is having that uh, at best they would get warm air. First thing I noticed, okay, we're changing the thermostat. First thing I noticed is not a lot of antifreeze came out this thing. I opened up, I took the hose off, removed the thermostat, and barely anything dripped out. So first of all, it's low on coolant. Second of all, here goes the thermostat that was in there. 
and you can see it has two holes drilled in it so it's got the first bleeder valve right there at the 12 o'clock position it's got one on the right one on the left and obviously there's only one bleeder valve on the new one but this could cause an issue right here I don't know if they were having issues trying to bleed the system so I think why they weren't getting any heat number one low on coolant number two who knows this thing was probably letting by too much coolant with the hose drilled in it so oh I don't know but anyways it's a problem either way we're changing it okay so on these cars they actually have a bleeder valve right on top of the thermostat housing as soon as I open that thing up you would not believe how much air it came out of the system um, so yeah as soon as we got all the air out the system as you can see we're uh, bleeding the cooling system right now it's not even completely warmed up yet we're almost at operating temperature yet I'm already blowing not like real hot nice air so it's just whoever was in here last they could not bleed out the system and that's why they resorted to drilling holes in the thermostat but that wasn't necessary if you know how to bleed the system which is super easy on this car it would have been just fine so we now have heat now it seems working pretty good all right so uh this is my cousin's accord one more time before he hits the road uh, one thing he pointed out is the ground cable coming right off the battery so this uh, thinner one goes to the chassis and the thicker one goes down to the transmission housing so if you look down there you can see that things uh pretty destroyed so we just uh, hit up AutoZone right now and we're gonna end up using this now this would have been perfect if it was a thicker gauge and longer but it's not so we're not gonna be able to use it so this end is gonna go to the transmission housing and this one is gonna get grounded to the chassis now that we got this off of the car we could take a better look at it look at that bad boy so it's a good thing it's getting changed out all right so here goes the finished product uh, we got the new battery terminal comes down goes into all of the OEM holding places and you can see it goes onto the tra transmission housing down there and then the other cable we end up getting just bolts on right here and just kind of loops around since it was a uh, longer than we wanted but it just loops around and comes right there so it's all set it looks much better than uh, this crap that came off and that's it I'm getting around to working on this Hyundai Elantra don't want the broken uh, CV shaft now it's not me I haven't been that busy that I couldn't get to it uh, number one the customer had to come up with the money to buy the part and pay for labor and uh, number two waiting for the parts to get delivered because we did buy them online to save money for the cut so the customer could save money so it's been here for quite a while parked outside and my cousin uh, helped me push it in and just go ahead and put this new CV shaft in and it should be okay okay so I just popped out the CV shaft and every time I get to use my indexing pry bar I love it for uh, situations like this it just works great in tight areas um yeah look at that what is that tape I don't know but um I don't think these are doing anything so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove them I'm sure all they do is uh rattle around down here and make noise okay so we're all put back together got the CV shaft on it the outer tie rod reconnected even though it's loose and it needs to be replaced uh, ABS wire is ripped, but ain't nobody got time for that. C -c 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 combo breaker, put this bad boy back on the road for it to fail another day. All right, so this bad boy is uh, back on the road again. I'm sure the customer is gonna be very happy to hear this. Uh, the crappy thing is when I make a right turn, I could hear the left CV shaft clicking and popping. <laughs> So I'm going to tell them what's up and hopefully they get it changed 
before it ends up like the right CV shaft and they went without a vehicle for about a month another upside is we have heat the heat's blowing nice and hot it's another issue I had to take care of while it was here so that's it for this one it's epic saga is coming to a conclusion Alright, so my cousin's Accord is back. This is the one that I bought for him and did all that maintenance and I made some YouTube videos on it. Uh, it's back this time to get the lower ball joint changed. Yeah, I should have changed it all at that moment when I had everything apart. But it just wasn't in the budget at that point. We had already spent a lot of money on the car. So now we're going to go ahead and do the lower ball joint. But another issue, the main problem why he brought it here is there was a noise whenever you turn the steering wheel. And so we started disconnecting things one at a time and it turns out that... It's not really making noise now, just a little bit. There we go. The inner tie rod is making a squeaking no noise and it's way louder when you're driving. But the thing is, I changed these inner tie rods, so this really sucks. So what I'm going to do is pull the bellow off and uh, maybe pack it with grease because this is a brand new inner tie rod. There's no reason it should be like this. Alright, so, uh, yeah. There's a lot of play in this thing. So it's a good thing we're changing them out anyway, but we're gonna try to figure out if we could get rid of that squeaking noise on the inner tie rod. But yep, yeah, we're gonna end up doing both lower ball joints. So as you can see, it just started snoring last night, so this is always uh, fun. Anyway, this truck just got dropped off. I did the brake pads on it maybe like a month ago. And I had no issues at all with the calipers or anything like that. And then he took it to some other guy for some reason. Now, not a shop or anything, just a guy that the neighborhood says he works on cars. And uh, the guy told him he needs two front calipers. So he changed out the calipers and all of a sudden, no brake pressure. I asked him, did he bleed it? And he goes, yeah, he bled it, but he couldn't get a brake pedal. This thing goes all the way to the ground. It's so scary that I'm even like scared to even try to pull it into my garage that it won't stop and I'm, I'm gonna end up hitting the wall but anyways uh yeah let's go ahead and look at the reservoir i don't know how well that's picking up but it is completely empty even though they filled it up so obviously something is leaking here we got a nissan what car is this uh a nissan Sentra. we got a nissan Sentra. Yep uh no blower speeds no anything so there was no issue with the actual heating system of the car we just had no fan uh, and it was as simple as uh disconnecting the old one putting a test light on it we get power to it it worked just fine so at that point plugging in the new motor should work and of course it did plugged in the new one it works fine so we're just gonna go ahead and pop in this new one and problem fixed a way customer get their heat back in the middle of winter <laughs> Concord once again and it's back for the tie rods so I don't know if I get this to move yeah I'm shaking the camera too much so you're not really gonna see anything but both outer tie rods are shot and they also brought me the inner bushings for way back there but I'm not really sure these are actually bad I don't really feel any play in them so once I get in there, in there, I'll check them a little bit better and see if we actually need to replace those bushings. I have the outer tie rod disconnected. We could see a lot better. Um, yeah, this thing is super shot. So it even goes uh, up and down. So, yeah. Okay, so now that we have it free, Trying to pull the inner tie rod or the inner rod. I don't feel any play in these bushings at all. So I'm gonna call the customer and see what they want to do. If they still just want to replace them or if they want to skip those inner bushings to try to save some money. But it looks like it's gonna be a pretty straightforward job. So we have a 2000 Ford Explorer here. The customer lost power. Uh, it will not go over. 30 miles per hour it was just a complete slug and it just you know hesitating wants to turn off there was a laundry list of codes there was like 25 codes in it um 
it led me to a fuse so a fuse was blown that kind of connected all those things together uh, did some more poking around and I got underneath the vehicle to the oxygen sensor and let's see if I could see it from here so that oxygen sensor right right there those wires were grounded on that uh that metal rod that's coming down from up there so the wire was shorted to ground as soon as you put the key in the run position it would blow the fuse so we're gonna go ahead and replace that sensor and make sure we remove those wires away but it's fixed now all right so here's the new sensor and connect it right there and I just grabbed a piece of a fuel line put it over the wires to protect them and as you can see I put some zip ties on it just to hold it in place but uh don't worry I'm not straining the wires or anything made sure it's uh, in a good position so it doesn't just by moving it like this I don't think it's gonna you know come close to rubbing on this again but even if it did it has plenty of protection now so that's it for this one yep wait let me not say yep because Thomas has been saying I say yep way too much in my videos <laughs> he's been calling me out so I gotta stop saying it sometimes I gotta edit it out the videos and stuff just cause he's making me feel bad <laughs> But the, yep, this bad boy is done for. It's kind of funny because. <laughs> okay, so I just got my new tool in. Uh, I've used one of these before and they're great. What's funny is this car just got dropped off maybe about 30 minutes ago because of a coolant loss issue. And this just came in like 15 minutes ago. So <laughs> right on time. Okay, so this is probably like the easiest thing I could think of. Here we have a 2009 Chevy Aveo and uh, the customer just bought it they were actually my neighbor so they just bought it it's a it's a starter car for someone so to me this is a perfect starter car but they wanted me to inspect it and look it over and see if it needs anything one of the few things that I did find with it is uh, this right here so you can see this how it's swollen so the inside uh, lining where the brake fluid actually goes through is compromised and the only thing holding the brake fluid in is uh, the outer rubber skin. So I have a new part here and I'm going to go ahead and get this replaced right now because it's definitely a safety issue. You never know when that's going to give out. It's not a Tuma. And we're all set here. So this was a pretty easy job, especially with my new tool. Okay, so I just picked up this new tool and this is the first time using it. Uh, pro tip, make sure you're using the correct adapter or else it's going to leak. <laughs> Other than that, it worked great. Uh, you put fresh brake fluid inside of here, you pressurize the system. Open up the bleeder valve on your calipers and the fluid just comes right out, uh, you know, pushes all the air out. Worked great. Saved me a lot of time here. Uh, the first time I get in to feel the pedal, it's nice and firm and this vehicle is ready to go. So it really is a time saver. Uh, I'm really happy I got it. But like I said, it's the first time using it. So obviously I'm going to keep using it and I will keep you guys updated. Mm -hmm.